Hey DIYers, what's going on? Mike Borders with the Mike Borders channel. Thank you for watching. Hey, in the event that your outboard engine is bogging or misfiring, basically not accelerating and getting up to speed, we're going to talk about what exactly happened to ours. Let's take a look. All right, DIYers, we are at the lake and it's pretty early. As you can see, no boats on the water. Coming to the back of the boat, there it is again, 1993 25 horsepower Mercury outboard. At this point, I've positioned the pontoon or float boat in a way where the outdrive is close to the shallow end and the dock. I now have the camera positioned and we need to remove our cover. And in our case, again, 93, we've got this little latch down below and we're going to carefully push down and that is going to unlatch and unlock the entire cover to the outboard. And then I've got this little slot here for my hand, carefully pull up and pull the cover completely off the engine. And at this point, with the cover removed, we have much better access, and this is a water line. We've got two spark plugs going into our cylinders and our spark plug boots feeding off of our plugs and feeding into their respective ignition coils, which are on top. Now to a close-up of the actual ignition coils and the cover, you can see the cover held on by three bolts, and you see a number one on the right portion of the cover and a number two as well as a part number for the cover itself. And you've got additional wiring feeding into the positive and negative leads of the coils themselves. I've got the camera set back and I want to talk about the plugs themselves. Here is what we are experiencing. When the engine is running idle or low RPM, honestly it runs great. No issues, no misfires, no hiccups, no nothing. However, once we give it additional throttle and increase the engine to a high RPM, we begin to experience misfiring. And we've replaced the plugs, we've replaced the wires and boots, we've adjusted the carburetor, we've adjusted the throttle cable. However, unfortunately we are still experiencing that misfire or hiccup or ever so slightly bogged down engine at high rpm so i am going to remove both of the spark plug boots to the plugs themselves and i'm going to remove the actual plugs and i want to show you what we're seeing carefully grab the boot not the wire and remove it and i am going to go down below remove this as well set that aside in our case we've got a 13 16th deep socket and I will remove the lower plug first and I am also going to carefully pull off our water hose and I will shift that down below just to get that out of the way and the plug should not be extremely tight and in the event that you have ran your engine within the last three hours do not touch the plugs allow the engine to cool off and the bottom plug as you can see it is very clean, it is not wet, it's not burnt, it's not dirty. Pretty good condition, I'll set that aside. Now to the upper plug. And what a significant difference. It is wet, look at that oil. It looks burnt, it looks terrible. And what that means to us is, even though it's a brand new plug within the last two weeks, the bottom cylinder is operating efficiently and as designed with the lower plug. It is firing. However, the top cylinder is not getting what it needs out of the plug because, again, it is completely wet, dirty, and awful looking. And, unfortunately, this is not firing or igniting. And because of that, basically, we're running on one cylinder. So... That tells us the next possible cause is routing all the way up to this ignition coil right here. However, in the event that you replace one ignition coil, do yourself a favor, 
replace them both at the same time. All right, DIYers, hey, real quick, breaking the action. What we are going to do at this point is we are going to remove the spark plug boots from the upper ignition coils, as well as all four of the electrical wires, both positive and both negative, that go into the respective terminals of the top portion of the coils. And we are not going to bore you with the coil replacement process in this video. However, scrolling above right now, as well as down below in the comment section, as well as the description section, will be a link to a video showing an extremely detailed step-by-step -step process on properly and safely replacing your ignition coils. Definitely check that out. From here you can see the ignition coils without the boots installed on them and the connections feeding inside the actual coils. And a few weeks ago when we were replacing our plugs and wires as well as the boots that go on to the ignition coils, we noticed that this coil right here, the number one coil, had a slight discoloration on the inside portion. I was hoping this coil was still okay, however we did notice it and that brings us to this video. Coming to a close-up view, I do want to come inside the actual ignition coil and show you what I am referring to. You can see just a little bit of black discoloration inside that ignition coil. Possible overheating and burning. And coming to the left or number two coil, very clean inside, as you see. So again, that ignition coil, in our opinion, is bad because it is not allowing the spark plug for the top cylinder to ignite and spark. And unfortunately, because of that, there is a massive buildup of oil inside the cylinder on top as opposed to the cylinder below. In other words, the spark plug on the bottom cylinder is igniting and sparking with no issues, burning off the fuel and oil inside the actual cylinder. However, the top cylinder is not. All of that oil is just gathering and building and unfortunately following the plug. All right, DIYers, we're back at the workstation, and yes, Mom and Dad's Jeski in-house for DIY repair videos during the winter. It'll be rolling out here shortly. Let's head to the workbench. Making our way around the jet ski, and hey, if you're into skateboarding, down below in the comment section, as well as the description section will be links on how to build your own custom logo skateboard and hang it on the wall. And we've got a lot going on, as I just said, jet ski repairs. And here are... The ignition coils we just removed and I'm going to reposition the camera and actually take them apart and see what's wrong with them. I've got the camera repositioned and I'm going to set the ignition coil that was working properly aside and direct our attention to the ignition coil that was causing the issues. Again it has that discoloration inside and you've got your positive terminal, your negative terminal, and then you've got a little grounding clip. And you've got a large rubber casing or protector boot and I'm going to carefully pull that off as you see here the shape of it and I will set that aside and you've got these leads here and our service manual states that you need to put RTB silicone inside those connections and it doesn't seem like whoever did this last put them in there I'm going to oh look there is a crack and no crack on the bottom, but a crack on top. That is a big issue. And I'm going to peel this off. There it is. Okay, it's all starting to make sense. DIYers, check that out. You can see it is broken. Look at that. And at low RPM, well, the engine's operating fine. However, once we increase that throttle to a high RPM, we are getting a misfire. And now we are very positive that it is this ignition coil because not only the discoloration inside the lead, but this broken lead back here. And, okay, wow. That is broke, and it is not supposed to be broke. And because it is broke, here is what's taking place at high RPMs. The switch box is feeding the electrical current to the ignition coils, both this one and this one. And the ignition coil is then amplifying the current and output into the spark plug boots and downstream to the plugs themselves inside the cylinder and creating that efficient spark. However, unfortunately, because ours is broken, well, it was touching because of this little tape here. And that's why that tape is there, as well as holding that grounding clip in place. However, at high RPMs, if you have not noticed in the past, I'll just share it with you. When your outboard engine is running, 
Over time, the vibration and shaking basically cracked this, and because it's cracked, even though that tape is holding it together, the ever so slight vibration in this location here with the electrical current is creating a short. And what does an electrical short cause? Well, it causes overheating, it causes a misfire, it causes an electrical current imbalance, all of which DIYs you don't want within your electrical system. I promise you that. And I'm going to take the rubber boot off the good operating coil. There we go. Set that aside. No cracks. Look at that. No cracks whatsoever. However, I don't think any silicone was added or RTV into this. So I'm going to put that back together, set it aside. And DIYers, this is our culprit. Yeah, there is absolutely no RTV silicone on these halves. That's what mercury caused them. In addition, no silicone present inside the ignition housing here. Not good. And shortly, we will apply this RTV silicone sealant to our brand new ignition coils, which are in these boxes right here, and allow it to cure for 24 hours. And what that does, again, is alleviate vibration with these halves to, again, alleviate the halves from breaking, as shown here. Not good. At this point, I've set the old ignition coils aside, and in the box here are two brand new ignition coils. OEM, there's the part number. And again, the RTV sealant down below in the comment section as well as description section will be links on where to purchase these. Let's go and open our brand new coils. And the brand new ignition coils are unpackaged and I also unpackaged the JB Weld High Temp RTV silicone. And it came with two additional parts bags and I opened up one of them and pulled out the piece of paper. Basically a service bulletin or page straight out of the service manual for our exact serial number service manual outboard engine DIYs we are making progress both ignition coils are properly prepped for reinstallment and again the old ignition coil set to the side and they did not have RTV sealant which increased the vibration inside the coils themselves and well that one failed prematurely, unfortunately. And again, we referenced our exact serial number service manual to ensure we are preparing our brand new ignition coils accordingly with that RTV sealant. Again, properly prepared, let's head back to the lake. Our ignition coils are secure. The cover is secured by the three bolts. Both positive and negative wires are secured on their respective leads or terminals on the ignition coils. The boots are secured, properly zip tied. The plugs are back in and we've got a brand new plug up top and the water hose. DIYers do not start your engine in less than 24 hours from doing this project. You need to allow that silicone to cure. And all looks good. I am going to carefully rest the cap back onto the engine and down below is our securing latch. Go ahead and secure that. All right, DIYers, we are back and docked, and as you saw, what a significant difference in engine performance. We're back up and running, and we hope this helps. Hey, do us a favor below the video. You'll see that thumbs up icon. Click on that, like the video, subscribe to the channel. Definitely ring your YouTube bell. That would be very helpful to us. We'd really appreciate it. Thanks again for watching. And definitely check out the link scrolling above. It takes you to our Fixing Boats and Jet Skis playlist.